Hey ramen fans, Brian from Ramen Adventures here. Today, let's talk about the secret ingredient that gives a bowl of ramen a salty kick and a little bit of umami aftertaste. We'll look at some different recipes from my collection of ramen cookbooks and we'll test these out for flavor and for science. What do I mean? Well, we'll run each sample through my Atago refractometer to test the bricks, the endbone, and the salt level of it, the saltiness of it. This little device is used to give you precise measurements for both the saltiness and the bricks, or the kind of concentration of your soup. Tare in Japanese simply means sauce. The sweet barbecue sauce on yakitori, that's tare. Vinegary sauce for your gyoza, that's tare. Seasoning liquid for ramen, that's tare too. Steak sauce? Well, that's sauce. It gets a little bit confusing, so for this video, any mention of tare, and I'm specifically talking about the seasoning liquid for ramen. Oh, and don't even think about buying something labeled as tare from the supermarket. That's probably the wrong stuff, and we're gonna make our own. It's very easy. Let's check it out. Tare is one of the most important aspects of ramen. Ramen broth is made without seasoning, so we need the tare to give it the saltiness. Unlike Western soups, the chef isn't there tasting the broth all day long, making sure the saltiness is at the right level. No, ramen is all about consistency. You put the exact amount of tare, the exact amount of soup, and you want every bowl to be pretty much exactly the same throughout the day, throughout the week, sometimes throughout the lifetime of a ramen shop. Now, while a chef with some kind of magical tongue might be able to test the ramen every day and just know that it's uh, exactly the same as it was the day before, using a scientific piece of equipment like this Optago Bricks Meter, that lets you know exactly that it's the same saltiness and also that the soup is the same consistency. I wanted to see what a professional ramen chef had to say about the importance of the consistency of their soup. So I headed over to Tsuta. やっぱりラーメンとって塩分はとても大事だと思う。やっぱり塩分の部分はすごい気をつけてですね。やっぱ食材が出る塩分と、まあ、調味料だよね。僕のうまく組み合わせて、まあ、やっています。塩分の違い
We're gonna use all of my favorite cookbooks. Oh, look at that one. <laughs> Ramen at Home by me. Ramen Vudomu by Brian McDuxton, that's me. All of these cookbooks obviously have lots of ingredients. Let's go shopping. I think we can get most of this stuff at the local supermarket. Other things uh, like this specialty soy sauce, I'm just gonna buy online. Let's go shopping. Welcome to my local supermarket in Tokyo, Japan. We've got all kinds of dried fish flakes, perfect for making dashi. Mirin is a sweet rice wine used in cooking. Always get hon mirin, as the other stuff is full of additives and weird syrups. Rice vinegar is called for in some recipes. Ginger from Kochi Prefecture is considered the best in Japan. Fresh garlic from Aomori is triple the price of the stuff imported from Italy. Is it worth it? For my broth, I'll grab some meat and then get bones from the local butcher. I hit up my local Shotengai shopping street. Well, looks like this spot is closed for today. Oh, this one's closed as well. Third time's a failure. Now that we have all the ingredients, let's cook. I used Kikogo soy sauce from Tokyo. A three-year aged honmirin from Kanazawa. Sea salt from the Noto Peninsula. Brown sugar from Okinawa. Special sake leaves vinegar from Mizukan. Kombu from my friend Bunpei on Rebun Island in Hokkaido. This Rishidi kombu is actually quite delicate and better used for light Kyoto cuisine than heavy ramen dashi. Now I actually have a few ramen cookbooks, English language, well, mostly. Uh, of course I have mine. Uh, I also have these two, Ramen Obsession, Ramen for Beginners. Same publisher as my book, right? They... Ooh, I actually have, oh my gosh, all of these ramen recipe books. Most of them are in English. Oh geez, okay. Ooh. Shout out to all the Polish people who bought my book, by the way. Uh, yeah, apparently like it sold out a few times on Amazon Poland uh, when I was live streaming and uh, people jumped on it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the Complete Ramen. Uh, this book, it's in Japanese, but my buddy Nishio-san came out with this book last year. It has 1,301 recipes. It's insane. It is the ramen encyclopedia. Everything you could ever want to know. Will it be coming out in English someday? Maybe. Stay tuned. Let's Make Ramen by my buddy Hugh Amano. Illustrations by Sarah Beckin. Awesome, awesome book. It's basically like a, like, the entire thing is illustrated. Awesome. Uh, and he's got a tari recipe in here. We're gonna make that one. And uh, shout out to Hugh. He made a second book after this called Let's Make Dumplings. Um, same style. With Sarah's super cool art. Like, I love it. It's so cool. Anyways, I don't know. I just, I bought this book because support your friends who write books, by the way. Like, you know, there you go. And we're also looking at Ramen Otaku from Sarah Gavigan. My friend out there, she runs uh, Otaku Robin out in uh, Nashville. Is it Nashville? Follow that. So we're gonna do those five. Um, Momofuku by David Chang and Peter Meehan. Uh, this one's interesting. He does have a tare recipe in here, but it requires chicken backs, and uh, I'm not making something with meat in it. Like, that's just, I'm just not doing that for today. Most ramen shops add the tare to the bowl when the soup is being assembled to be served. But that always struck me as a Russian roulette way of seasoning a soup. Too much, too little, too easy to screw up. Uh, and then he probably says some, he says the F word like 20 times in this paragraph as well. But uh, yeah, that's not the way they do it in Japan. Okay, uh, another one, Simply Ramen by uh, Amy Kimoto-kan. Awesome book. A friend of mine, this book came out a while. This is one of the very first ramen cookbooks that came out. 
The reason I'm not using her shoyu dare, her shoyu dare, her shoyu tare recipe is using uh, chashu braising liquid. So hers is using that, which is uh, great, great, but I didn't make any chashu, so. Sorry, Amy. Ivan Ramen by Ivan Orkin. Now his shio tare recipe, super cool, but it's using sofrito. First step, preheat the oven to 110 degrees Celsius. I'm in Japan, I don't have an oven. So unfortunately, I can't really make uh, Ivan's recipe. Now, I, I actually don't know what is the etiquette when you cook with someone else's recipe, when you use someone else's recipe uh, in a blog post, when you reference it in a video like this, what is the etiquette for uh, disclosing what's in the book? Do you give the whole recipe or do you uh, not and tell people to buy the book? I'm gonna play it safe. I will give you my recipe for everyone else's recipe, I will tell you what's in it, but I'm not gonna tell you the measurements. You should own all these books if you have space. Um, yeah. Ramen for beginner is a very simple recipe and ramen for beginner, ramen for beginners, many, many beginners out there. Ramen obsession is basically the same recipe with a couple added ingredients. Um, soy sauce, sake, mirin, sugar, and then Ramen Obsession adds some garlic and ginger. Okay, this book has, there are 93 shoyu tare recipes. I picked number one, uh, koikuchi shoyu, which is the, the strong shoyu. It has tamari shoyu, which is that um, kind of expensive. It's like a special, uh, show you made without wheat. So only soybeans and salt, uh, Nihonshu, sugar, and MSG, baby. I was surprised. The only one that calls for MSG right here. All right, and let's make ramen. It's soy sauce, uh, dark soy sauce, and mushroom soy sauce. Uh, mirin, rice wine vinegar, sesame oil, and water. So this one dilutes it with a little bit of water. But ramen otaku's tare recipe, really interesting. It's complicated in that it's more than just like pour five things into a pot and simmer it for a minute. No, this one, uh, it was actually fun to make. We had to make, first we had to make a sake dashi. So that is a dashi, but it's made with Japanese sake, nihonshu, instead of water, which is sake, uh, a couple different kinds of fish, dried fish flakes, kombu, and dried shiitake mushrooms. And you take that, uh, that dashi, that sake dashi, and you mix that with uh, rice vinegar, salt, cane sugar, soy sauce, kombu, more sababushi, more katsuobushi, and sake kasu, sake leaves, which is the, the byproduct of making sake. Again, all of these, you're just mixing stuff together and maybe simmering it to help dissolve, but very simple. And then we have ramen at home. Ramen at home. We actually, we're gonna use a spice grinder to grind up the dried fish and the shiitake into a powder. However, I could not find my spice grinder for the life of me. Uh, I threw apart my one place in my kitchen where I would keep my spice grinder. It's gone. I don't know where it went. Maybe I threw it away. I don't think I, why would I throw it away? Who throws away a spice grinder? Anyways, I didn't have it, so I made the dashi the, uh, the old-fashioned way. Put two grams each of shiitake and kombu in two cups of water. Let it sit in the fridge overnight. Put it over medium-high heat, and when it hits a boil, immediately take it off and strain it. Put this liquid back on the heat and bring it to a boil. 
Once that boil hits, kill the heat and add the katsuobushi. Let it sit for a few minutes. By the way, that's two grams of katsuobushi as well. Strain it through a fine sieve or a coffee filter. Weigh out some of this liquid and add exactly 17% salt by weight. Get out a calculator and multiply the weight of the dashi by 0.17 to get that number. Finally, add equal amounts of soy sauce to this salty dashi. One cup of tare will be enough for around eight servings of ramen. So you might as well make a lot and just keep it in the fridge. The atago unit is very simple to use. Zero it out with some water, wipe it down, and you're ready to test. For the tare testing, I diluted each down to a 10% solution. 45 mils of water and five mils of tare. Simple. I used my Atago salt meter to test each sample. It was interesting, some of them were as low as 9%, a couple around 10%, and my sample was up there at like 13%. So all quite different. Now, enjoy some BGM while I do science. Okay, first I want to try each of these just by themselves. Now I know they're going to have a real strong salty flavor. I mean, each of these is basically like taking a shot of straight soy sauce with a little flavors, but let's just give them a taste. Let's just give myself a little bit, just a couple drops, right? Okay, here we go. <laughs> it was nice. Like a mellow show you a little bit uh you know not a lot of ingredients in this one but uh it kind of it's kind of mellowed out complete ramen encyclopedia the only japanese made book here uh in my collection all right let's see this one uh whoa wow so yeah a lot more sugar in this one but also that msg that ajinomoto wow <laughs> oh i just feel it it feels mm, feels so good <laughs> all right let's make ramen my buddy hugh's book and this one um you know it's got that that sesame oil in it so i have a feeling it's gonna taste like sesame oil to me Mm. Yeah, so the sesame oil definitely uh, stands out. But, uh, you know, it's a nice balance. Actually, this one would work really well as like a salad dressing. Uh, this with a little vinegar, a little oil, boom, boom, boom. You got a nice Asian salad dressing. Toss it on cold noodles. Ooh, done. Ramen otaku. All right, drip it in there. This one's interesting because that sake kasu actually, it almost looks powdery inside the mix. So uh, it's a definite like different color even. Okay. There's a lot going on in that one. I think the sake kasu is a big, big uh, flavor addition to it. It adds that sweetness, a little bit more of fermentation flavor. The, one of the most complicated ones to make because you have to make that sake dashi uh, and then you know you make uh, another dashi basically when you're making the tare but you know all of these are very easy effort you know despite this one obviously no this one obviously being the easiest just mix them together all of them very very easy and you could easily make like a make a big container in, in like five to ten minutes for each of these last one Ramen, ramen vu domu. <laughs> ramen at home by yours truly. Here is mine. How does it compare? Okay. 
So both of these, uh, same publisher too. Ours, they both have a real strong, like raw soy sauce flavor going on. Very, uh, very big salt flavor going on in mine. All the rest, more soy sauce, these a bit balanced, but the true test, how do they taste when they're mixed with the broth? Taste test number two, let's do it. Sesame oil aroma. Mm, whoa. Yeah, some real. Uh... Mm. They're all nice, you know, they all have that base soy sauce thing, but then a little, a little something on top. Like we got the sesame on top, we got the sake kasu on top. <laughs> we got that MSG, baby. And then, uh, you know, for like a straight soy sauce. I like it. <laughs> I like it. It's got that bigger salt kick from the salt. So yeah, it definitely has like, whoa, that's salt. And you're not just getting the salt from the, from the soy sauce. Mm. If any of them uh, match with that basic chicken broth and turn it into just like chicken soup, most, I gotta say it's mine because of that salt. Whereas the other, it all has the, the soy sauce, so you get a more like Asian flavor. But there we go. Tested. I wanted to talk to another ramen chef about testing their soup. And I knew that Tsukara-san from the Bond of Hearts group used the same Atago devices. I hit him up at his shop Gyorai in Bunkyoku, a suburb of Tokyo. By the way, I also ranted for about 10 minutes about the difficulties of writing my first cookbook. If you want to hear the rant, I'll post the video over on my Patreon for my Patreon subscribers. Patreon is a site where you can directly support creators like myself for about a buck a month. I took ads off my website and YouTube only pays me enough for a few bowls of ramen a month. So please consider directly supporting me if you like this content. はい、え、僕はえ、ラーメンを、え、日頃から作っているんですけども、これ体調が悪い時ありますよね。風邪をひいたりとか、味がわからないって。そういう、そういう時にも日頃から、え、アタコさんの機械を使って、え、塩分濃度、スープ濃度などをデジタル化にすると、どんな時でも安心して、え、お客
今度こっちに出てブリックスを測るでも今回のこのあたごさんのこの機械はスープを取ると1回で乗せますねそうするとスタートしますとはい3秒で3秒たった3秒で塩分濃度もブリックスも両方できるもう最高これ欲しいです最高です